Hello, what's up everyone? For this video, I want to work on another sunrise image, but this time I'm only using one exposure. That means for this shot, there will be a lot of recovering to do, especially from the darkest areas. And I also want to change the color theme of this shot, which means I'm introducing some more blue tones, but also keep a lot of those warm colors. So let's start the editing. As you can see, I'm in the camera raw editor and I'm going to edit the whole image in Photoshop with the help of the Nick Collection plugin. First, I'm heading to the optics tab where I activate those settings. Then I'm heading back to the basic stuff and I'm also changing the profile to Adobe Landscape, which will give me some more base saturation. Then I'm changing the white balance to daylight and you can see this will introduce those nice blue color tones and just gives the image some more color diversity. Now let's start fixing the exposure. Right away you can see those highlights in the sky are way too overexposed. I can start fixing this by simply dropping the highlights. And when we take a look at the histogram we can see the overexposure is fixed although it still looks kind of a little overexposed. But again, sometimes for those sunrise or sunset images, I think that's okay to keep a little overexposure just to add this dramatic effect right there. Next, I want to increase the shadows so I can restore some details from the darker areas, but you can see this doesn't have a great effect on it. That means I will be fixing it using local adjustments, but for now let's keep doing the basic stuff first. Now I want to introduce some more contrast and I also want to add some vibrance right away. All right, that looks pretty nice. Now to fix those shadows, I usually would go for multiple exposures, blending them together, either using HDR or luminosity masks. In this case, I want to show you a way using a graduated filter and you can see the graduated filter outside of the image on the right side, which basically covers the whole photo. With this one, I want to bring up the exposure and this way fix the shadows. So let's see, somewhere around here looks pretty good, but of course we get blown out highlights like crazy. In this case, since I only want to target the dark spots, I can simply activate a luminance range mask. And with this slider right here, I can target a specific range, in this case the dark tones, simply by dragging down the right slider. And I only want to boost the very, very dark areas, so I'm going with a very low luminance range. You can also hit Visualize Luminance Map, and here you can see the red areas are the areas which are affected by this gradiated filter. So in this case, right now it still looks kind of strange, but that's because this range mask isn't that soft. So if we introduce some more smoothness, we can fix that as well. You can see we get much, much better results here. Again, let's visualize that luminance range mask. And you can see we have perfectly selected the dark tones of the image with this. All right. Then let's continue with the other gradiated filters. Uh, I want to start in the sky and as usual, I want to make the top part of the sky a lot darker to add some more dramatic feeling to this shot. So for the first one, just drop the exposure. Also, I think I could add some clarity to get out some more structure from the clouds. Okay, then let's head to the next one. Again, I just want to drop the exposure slightly. And again, we could add some contrast and some clarity for more structure in there. Then to make the clouds look a little softer, I'm simply dropping the texture. That's it for the sky. Now you can see I also have applied a gradiated filter for the foreground and this one I want to use to make the foreground a little brighter. And here we can simply increase the shadows. We could also add some more detail by increasing the clarity and the texture. 
This way it looks pretty good, I think. Then I also have applied a radial filter just to add some glow on the horizon level. And here I'm just increasing the blacks. And I'm dropping the dehaze to make this effect a little stronger. Then finally we can introduce some more warmth here by adding temperature. Alright, and that's it for the local adjustments. Then let's continue with the color grading and I want to start this process in the, in the curves panel. Here I'm heading to the red channel, then pick up the upper right point and just drag it to the left. You can see this will introduce some subtle warm highlight colors, which works really, really well for sunrise and sunsets. All right, now let's continue in the color mixer. I guess for this shot, I can drop the reds and let's also drop the oranges and maybe introduce some more blue tones. For the split toning, I'm simply going with a warm color tone for the highlights. Uh, let's make it a little stronger even. And then for the shadows, I'm applying a cold color tone. But here, let's drop the saturation. And that looks pretty good. And finally, let's sharpen everything. And then finish this edit in Photoshop. First, of course, I want to clean up this image. So I'm duplicating that layer by hitting Ctrl J. So I do have a backup layer just in case I mess something up. Then I'm grabbing the spot healing brush right there. Let's zoom in a little bit and just get rid of a few things. All right, I also want to remove this tree branch because it's very, very distracting. And here I'm simply using the lasso tool and try to make a very precise selection. And that's important because the more precise your selection, the better the results you get from the content that we have later. All right, then I'm hitting Shift F5 and you can see I already have selected the content aware and just hit OK. Then let's see, I think I want to add some more glow. So I'm applying a new layer and switch the blending mode to soft light, I think. Now I'm grabbing the brush by pressing B and I'm holding down the Alt key and click in this area where I want to apply the glow to pick up this color tone. Uh, let's make it a little more saturated and then I'm just painting in some more soft glow. All right, nice. I think I could add another new layer and this time go with the hard light blending mode, which will add a more stronger effect. So just be a little more careful. All right, that looks nice. Now let's merge everything. And then I think I can add some more contrast. So I'm using a curves adjustment layer. And here just apply a simple S curve. Yeah, that looks much better. I just want to mask out the center part since it's a little too overexposed now. So I'm using a black brush and just paint on this layer mask. All right, nice. Then again, I'm merging those two layers. And now it's time to check the Nick Collection plugin. So let's head to Filter, Nick Collection, Collect Fix Pro 4. And right away, the polarization effect will help a lot on this image. This one just adds some nicer color tones by making them a little stronger. Of course, I don't want to overdo it but I think that looks pretty solid. Okay, then let's apply another filter right away. And I think I'm going with the tonal contrast. First, I'm resetting the preset settings here since they are a little too strong. And then let's boost the midtones. That looks really, really good, I think. 
I don't want to have this effect in the sky, so I'm adding a control point. So I'm just adding this to the foreground by creating this right here somewhere. I could even increase the midtones in this case. Okay, and then finally let's add another filter. And here I'm going with the Brilliance Warm filter just to introduce some more warmth here. Maybe let's bring the saturation down a bit. Okay, let's go with something like this. That looks really, really nice. And at this point I'm actually done editing this shot. So I hope this was interesting and helpful. If you have questions, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.